In the last video, we have created the most unattractive UI for our recommendation system. It might lack the beauty, but it did the job of connecting to Next.js API route and bringing the data from Postgres database. In this video, we are going to make a couple of changes to improve our interface. For this, we will use Tailwind CSS. This is obviously not a course on CSS or Tailwind CSS, so I'll keep it very simple. We already have dependencies for Tailwind CSS installed, not to mention that we also have some default configuration in place. And this is where we are going to start. So I'm going to change this configuration slightly. I decided to use a couple of more colors for our UI and um, we don't also need the background image. So we're going to clean this up a bit. The new configuration you can copy from the supporting article. So I'll copy it from here. Oh, you don't have a link to that. It's in the description. So, and I will replace the complete content of the existing one with what I copied. And you can see that I added several new colors. So we can reference those colors on our page. I want to make it in the blue, dark blue style color. So I have added different shades of blue over here. Feel free to use different colors and feel free to use your imagination for the UI we are building and put whatever you want here. So this is the configuration. Now we need to go and change the page itself to introduce that Tailwind magic. We will also restructure our page a bit. So, so far we had a very simple form and then we had a list of our movies over here. We'll destroy this a bit and make it a bit more sophisticated. I don't want to bore you with me typing HTML code and CSS. Trust me, you don't want to see that. So let me just copy what I have done already. And the first part which we are going to replace is the form itself. So our form contains an input element and a button. And I will just replace it completely and share with you what exactly I have done here. So I covered it in a section. And now let me hide this. Now the logic remains the same. However, I rearranged slightly the elements to have this visual effect so that we have a search um, SVG icon over here. We have a nice area to type without any of those cuts which we had in the previous input element. And we have a button which has a color when I hover over it or when I click on it. And this is all done with uh, some extra uh, HTML elements such as SVG I added here, uh, but also I'm using the class names. And over here you can notice that I have plenty of classes such as, for example, text SM or text white, which uh, we have seen last time when I had to change it to text black. Uh, this is the CSS from Tailwind, which allows us without adding our own CSS to make those visual changes to the UI. The same we have, for example, for absolute position of this SVG element for the search icon. Uh, and also we can uh, set different styles uh, so that we want to have, for example, a zero uh, pixels on the left side. It must be flex. So there are plenty of those CSS classes you can use out of the box if you are relying on Tailwind CSS. I would recommend that you check the documentation of Tailwind CSS. There is a lot of information on how exactly to use uh, the classes and what kind of classes you do have. For instance, if you would like to use Flexbox, then you can use Flexbox properties as classes and add them as they 
are. Uh, the same for the grid, the same for the minor properties. For example, you can define paddings and margins with uh, CSS classes. So it's very, very handy. Uh, it might be confusing at first, at least it was for me. I had to check what kind of classes I have and what kind of um, magic I need to write to make it work. Uh, however, it's pretty straightforward, even though it makes it um, quite heavy when you read those long lines. Still, uh, depends on your uh, preference and style. So yes, we added uh, our uh, icon for the search, then we improved a bit the input. Here I also added a number of different uh, properties. I added a proper border. I also included proper colors. You can actually define colors for the um, white and black modes uh, for within the uh, CSS. I just used the uh, black one because I really prefer the dark colors. However, you do you and you can experiment it as much as you uh, want. So the same for the button. Now it has uh, an absolute position. I also define the distance from the elements at the bottom. Um, I defined also how it looks when it is hovered. So all that usual stuff, which normally I would need to write CSS, but here I'm just kind of using the classes provided by Tailwind CSS. Next is our list of the movies which looked as ugly as it goes. Let me remind you, let's search for something with a sky. And let's see how it will turn out. And you also see that we don't really, we don't have an indication that something is in progress, which makes it a bit puzzling why exactly we are waiting. And this is the list which we have right now. Let's prettify it a bit. For this, I also have a code snippet, which you can use. And I will replace the complete div with this code snippet. And we have a plenty of things here. Over here, I am actually adding a new property, is loading. This property indicates that something is happening, that we are waiting for the results. Um, let's actually add it together right now and then we can move on to the visual representation. But is loading is very similar to the use state which we already have. So I will have is loading as well as set is loading. And this is state and it will be false by default. And uh, yes. So this is it. And now we need to set when the data is being loaded. And this happens when we send the request to the server. So we can set is loading to true right before we are fetching the data. And then when we got the data, we can set it to false so that we know that data is there and any indication that data is loading should be removed. Now, moving to the indicator about the loading data, this will be an SVG, an SVG which actually has some movement in it. So here, if the data is being loaded, then we are showing an SVG element which uh, does some animation. If not, then we are showing the current list of the movie plots. And here in the movie plots, I also made a couple of changes. We don't have images per movies. So I added something small and nice there just to add a bit of color to the page. 
Then I've rearranged uh, the content where we have the information about the director, year, title and plot. And what I did, I played a bit with opacity of the elements so that more prominent, more important parts of the UI, such as title, are completely visible. But for the rest, we do have a bit of um, transparency. Uh, and here you can see that it's like 80% um, visible for the plot, same for this uh, nice image, so it's not too bright on the page. Uh, I also played it with opacity over here for the year, which is like less important item and director is a bit more visible. So it's kind of the same color for all the text blocks. However, because we are making some of them uh, more or less prominent, then we can play with kind of a shape of the elements. I am not a designer, so um, don't criticize me too harsh for this. And finally, I am adding the link to the wiki page uh, with, again, some hover effect and uh, some kind of ease in and out when we do the hover. Let's see how it looks. Let's look for something new. I am still drinking my coffee. Huge cup, I know. And uh, that's why... Let's look for something related to coffee shop. I don't know. Let's see what options we might get. Okay, we do have a movie about caffeine. Uh, we also have Just My Luck. Interesting enough, because we encoded the information about the movie, about the plot. So it somehow connected this phrase to a coffee shop. Maybe coffee shop is pretty close to hotel. I must say I'm not completely impressed by these results, but oh well, maybe it's not much movies about coffee shops. Since the query with the coffee didn't work that well, let's look for restaurants and let's look for New York restaurants. So in the first suggestion, we have the title of the restaurant, but we were encoding the description of the plot. So let me search if we have New York as a phrase here. Now we have NYC here, so the model made a connection that this is a good recommendation because we have the word restaurant and we have NYC. For the second one, we do have exactly a full phrase which we are looking for, so it was logically a good suggestion. For the third one, I don't see anything here, so let me see NYC, so it doesn't truly really have New York mentioned in this one, and I am assuming that New Jersey Shore is close enough. I don't know how that model works, but maybe that's why it was given this suggestion. But this makes total sense, because with contextual search, what we are doing, we are not looking for exact, precise words or a phrase, Instead, we are looking for what gives the same meaning to what we are searching for. And here, it's pretty close enough. Feel free to play with this user interface. Enter your search phrases and get the recommendations about the movies. And in the next video, we will look back on the work we have done and discuss challenges and potential limitations of using TensorFlow with JavaScript and in general using JavaScript for ML and AI. So I will see you there.